Recently, someone inside the Girls Twiddling Knobs podcast community asked me a great question. Is there a playlist for the podcast where people can check out the music from all the past guests? And I said, no, but there definitely should be. So we got to work over here at GTK HQ, and I'm delighted to share that the Girls Twiddling Knobs podcast playlist is now live on Spotify and is waiting for you to dive into right now. Whether you're curious to find out more about the wonderful women we've featured on the podcast so far, desperate for some music production inspiration, or committed to diversifying your listening material, this is the playlist you've been waiting for. Check it out right now at the link in the show notes. Well, hello and welcome back to another Golden Nugget episode featuring words of wisdom from the Girls Twiddling Knobs archive. And today we're going way back in time to episode number five of the podcast with Welsh-born LA-based producer SJ for some practical music production tips. The full episode is amazing, by the way, so do go and check that out after this. But keep listening now for Sammy's top three music production tips to help you professionalise your process and streamline your workflow. We're talking templates, presets and Sammy's secret hack for using delay on vocals instead of reverb. If I've lost you already, just keep listening because Sammy explains it all so, so well. Let's have your three tips, Sammy. So I asked you if you could come up with three tips that would help anybody listening to this podcast who's thinking, I would love to start getting into recording and production. Where do I start? Like, what are some really great things I should know about? So firstly, getting started is your setup. Mm -hmm. I would recommend that you set up a template and you could have a template for every genre that you want to work with, or if you just, you know that you mostly like working in one genre, just set up one template. But have your template on your page that you always start with, and that will be your instruments that you generally always like. Mm -hmm. Um, For example, I love um, the Complete series with Native Instruments. I love Mm -hmm. using that because it includes battery for drums it has great piano plugins it has you know bass strings all sorts of things so if you know that you generally love 808 kicks uh, kits for drums set up a few channels kicks snares hats open close you know percussion mm. set up piano roads synths effects wh- whatever you think you generally will always have in a track and then with within that you could have two channels that have reverb and delay on them, mm-hmm. set your buses, basically set a template within Logic or whatever it is that you're using so that when you start, you don't waste any creative energy mm-hmm. on setting up channels. Yeah. You have a template and then you tweak that. You will change things from there, but start with that because it, it will save you so much time. Yeah. So that's the first tip is templates such good advice such good advice (laughs) and so easy to you know not realize that until you've already recorded eight songs on your album Mm -hmm. oh definitely (laughs) yeah and then you're like oh right I could have actually just set every track up the same and tweaked things (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah cool okay brilliant so that's number one uh what's number two So once you're getting into all of that, you know, basically two and three are of equal importance, really. And it's taking something from basic programming to starting to sound a bit more professional. Mm. So the first thing, which would be point number two, is compression is your friend. Mm -hmm. But like a friend, don't abuse it. (laughs) (laughs) Right. So you definitely want to get into compression and you know, I, I think Logic's really good because it gives you presets. Yeah. Um, however, they're not they're not perfect. So I, I would load up a preset, for example, if you've got, you know, say a female vocal. You can load up a soft, gentle vocal preset or, you know, whatever looks good in that preset menu. And then just nudge things a bit from there Mm. and make sure nothing's going into the red, nothing's getting distorted or Mm. nothing's too what I call 
nosebleed frequency Mm -hmm. you know where when you turn it up you feel like your nose is going to bleed yeah so but if you have gentle compression on most of the things you've got going on and you use it in the right way again don't overdo it yeah that makes all the difference it takes you from something sounding really flat to having a bit of life Mm. which brings us to the third point Mm -hmm. panning Mm -hmm. get into panning Mm. and the best way to start with that is just imagine a stage setup Mm. when you go to a concert with a you know full band what have you got you've got your drum kit that in itself is a mini panning situation Mm -hmm. you know if you're sat at a drum kit you've got hi-hats to your left splash cymbals to your right toms might be between your left and right so you can spread those. I always like to have hi-hats, you know, maybe 10 or 15 points to one side or the other, depending on if I've got percussion, you know, if I've got a tambourine or percussion, I'll have them in one side, hi-hats on the opposite side. Mm-hmm. Then think about the rest of the stage. Your bass is always really going to be up front with your kick drum, but you might have piano and strings to one side, horns to the other side. Vocals will always be in the middle, lead vocal. And just think about panning things out. And then as you get more into that, you can automate panning. Mm -hmm. You know, you can have it move around, which is lovely. Mm. Um, And then that, again, is just really giving some depth and some life to your track um so this is just for starting out you know set your templates and that might take you a while and that's okay you might do you know a few days on that before Mm -hmm. you even do anything then you know look at some tutorials for compression and compression is different for every instrument Mm -hmm. have a look at that get into that and then have a mess about with panning Mm -hmm. you know you'll you will be amazed how your ears light up when you go from everything being at the middle to suddenly putting all these different things in different places on that audio spectrum. Because, you know, we, we don't have one ear in the middle of our forehead. We have yeah. two on each side. So play around with that. You know, Absolutely. It's, it's a luxury. We didn't always have that in recording. Yeah. You know, stereo panning was not always there. And when it arrived, it was like, wow, the guitar's in the right. Yeah, you know, so yeah. So those are the three main things for starting off to sort of have a mess about with and see how you go. Great. That's really good. Really, really helpful. (laughs) Um, Cool. Okay. so and I know you've got a bonus one as well. This is really me giving away my secrets. Um, (laughs) We love that. I I love vocal mixing. I love harmonies. You know, really, like I said, I, I was a professional vocal producer before full production Mm -hmm. and everyone's different but what I really like is so most people when they're recording vocal stacks they do stereo pairs and they do four four or two tracks Mm -hmm. of each harmony I like to do three Mm -hmm. because I like to have one up the middle and two hard panned left and right Mm -hmm. for each note and that's how I sort of blend things and I'll usually have the high ones down a little bit lower and the lower ones up a little bit higher mm. um and I'm much more of a fan of delay over reverb mm. so I will really have reverb on vocals I'll probably have a touch of stereo delay and always like a low cut you know where you just roll off that bottom end on the EQ especially for female vocals mm-hmm. and it just gives you a little bit more intimacy mm. That's really it's interesting. Very <laughs> yeah, because it's it's very counter to what many many people do. Um, what is it then, Sammy, that you think um, the delay gives that reverb can't? I think reverb can muddy things if you're not mm-hmm. careful. And again, it it really depends on the the style that you're going for. You know, if you're if you're going for what I call sort of hipster indie rock silver lake vibes Mm. then it's a wash with reverb and octaves and all of this and that's great but generally i think a bit of stereo delay and you have to mix that nicely and eq the delay Mm. also Mm -hmm. so that i will give it a low cut as well it it gives you some life and some space whilst maintaining clarity 
Yeah. Without muddying things a bit. And, you know, of course, this is all just personal taste and it really depends on what kind of vocal you're working with. But give it a try and see if it works for you. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a great thing for people listening to to give a go. And, um, and, you know, obviously you can you can mess around with reflections on your delay as well, can't you? So Yeah, muck around with all yeah. of it because there's really no rules. Um, and I, I love templates and things like Logic because it gives you a healthy place to start if you, mm-hmm. you're not really sure how to set it up yourself. And then you just tweak yeah. from there. You could tweak a lot, you know, you can yeah. roll those dials like girls twiddling knobs all day. Yeah. <laughs> And just see how you feel, because yeah. basically all that matters is does it sound good to you? Yeah, absolutely. And then, you know, on the template theme, when you find that balance that you like on the mm. delay, you can then save that as a template, can't you? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. And then you can get into other more professional plugins as you go. Like I mm. really love these CLA plugins for vocals mm. that come in the Waves bundle. Yes. I've probably been using those for the last maybe two or three years. Um, they're great. You know, yeah. again, tweak to make fit. But, um, yeah, they're, they're really lovely quality. Brilliant. And if somebody's um, listening, you know, I know a lot of the people who are listening may be total beginners with recording. Yeah, that's um, great. Which, yeah, is really exciting. And, you know, if you are listening and you're a beginner, you've got so many great things to explore. Um but what what do you think is the what's the difference between a plugin that you get just bundled in with your door and then something that you buy as an add-on like a Waves uh, plugin set for example? Well, I w- you know initially I want to say oh well it's going to be better quality or more professional, but not necessarily. Mm. It's just it's just personal preference and budget really budget to be honest with you is the biggest difference because if you're using logic now there's some really fantastic plugins that are included with that program and it's really cool um it's then really about how much money have you got to spend on plugins you know waves is they're pricey if you if you're buying bundles um you can buy things separately but they are really really great Mm -hmm. I mean there's definitely a massive um difference in quality but if you're just starting out I don't think you have to spend that money initially I would spend a couple of years just just in logic and exploring all that and learning the basics of of things like compression and delay and panning and EQ compression and EQ Mm. and all of that and getting a clean you know plugins are only good if your source is clean yeah so otherwise they they're not helpful nothing's helpful to you your Mm -hmm. recording has to be as clean and dry as you can possibly get it unless you're purposely you know wanting to pick up ambience in your surroundings which is also fine yeah yeah get get everything clean and well recorded first and then worry about plugins Mm. yeah if you're starting out you know yeah absolutely Well, I hope you liked this Golden Nugget episode and that it's given you some fresh perspectives and new ideas to try in your own music and creative life. Remember to swing back over here each Thursday for another dose of bite-sized Girls Twiddling Knobs realness from the archives before we drop season four in November this year. If you like this episode, why not hit subscribe and share it with a musician friend? And to listen to the full original episode, check out the link in the show notes. Okay, Knob Twiddlers, I'll catch you here next time. Just one final thing, dear listener. I just wanted to ask what you thought of today's episode. Did you love it? Did it make you feel emotions and stuff? Did it give you a whole new philosophy on the meaning of life? No? Okay, well, fair enough. But if you liked it at all, just share a teeny weeny review wherever you're listening because, number one, my ego likes a massage and... More importantly, two, I can learn what you're loving and want more of. Oh, and three, it'll boost our ranking in the podcast algorithm, meaning more women and girls will hear all this girls twiddling knobs goodness. Triple win. I can't wait to read your review.